All right, guys, so we are going to look at Hess's Law Part 2 and look at a different way of approaching um, finding the enthalpy change for our reactions. So we've looked at piecing together different reactions to get an overall reaction and then adding up the delta H values. So this method is a little more straightforward. Um, we're looking at values in our textbook. So I've got the textbook pages up here. You'll want to get your book out now. So you've got that handy. Um, and just plugging them into a formula to actually calculate delta H. So this is kind of a different approach to it. So it is still Hess's law. It's still looking at kind of getting the, the total enthalpy of an overall reaction just in a different way. So the enthalpy or energy change of an overall reaction depends on the enthalpy change of the total bonds that are broken and formed in the reaction. So every chemical reaction has bonds that we're breaking and bonds that we're forming so that those atoms can rearrange to make the new chemicals. What they found is that the energy it takes to form a chemical um, can be calculated or measured and we have created tables um, of standard enthalpies of formation, or delta H, not F. Um, so let's talk about what that is. We're going to look at the table in our book, so bear with me. I'm moving the camera. Bam. All right, so this is your Appendix C in the back of your textbook. And in this table, whoop, you have a whole lot of different chemicals listed. It goes on for multiple pages. Um, and what it shows you is it separates it by element. So they're in alphabetical order by element. And it gives you a whole bunch of chemicals that are associated with that element. Let me zoom in on, I'm going to go to where water is. Water is listed on the second page under oxygen. Most elements are listed under their first, or most compounds are listed under the first element except for things with hydrogen. Let me check the second element. So for instance, let's look at water. Um, the first column here are the values we're going to be focusing on. We will look at the other two columns on another day, but we're going to focus on these. So we can see that water is on here. We've got water as a gas and water as a liquid. And the value that's given is for water as a gas is negative 241.82. Um, the units for these are at the top of the column. They are kilojoules per mole. And what that tells us is to form water as a gas, it is going to release, because it's negative, 241.82 kilojoules for every mole of water we form. We also have the value listed for liquid water. Now liquid water is going to release a little more energy because that gas, gaseous liquid, would have to cool a little bit to become liquid water. Um, so we can see they have different values there for the states of matter. We've got like peroxide here, gas and liquid. Um, and we have values for all kinds of different elements and chemicals. Now you will notice up here we've got oxygen as a gas, um, as a single oxygen atom. We have it as O2, and we have it as ozone, O3. Notice that your O2 is a value of zero. So that is our naturally occurring oxygen. We find O2 um, in nature. So it doesn't take any energy to actually form oxygen molecules already formed in nature, so its value is zero. So anything that's in its, um, its elemental form is going to have a value of zero. But you can always check the book just to make sure. So let's go back to our notes here. Zoom back out. All right. So those are standard enthalpies of formation. So our enthalpy H um, of that lowercase f is a formation, so to form the chemical. And this little circle symbol, that little thing, it's like a degree, but we say it's not, like K-N-O-T, not. Um, and what that means is that it's a standard enthalpy. That means all of the values in that list have been measured under the same conditions. And the conditions are on the very first page. Um, it says at 298.15 Kelvin or 25 degrees Celsius. So all of the values were measured at the same temperature so that we have consistency between values and we can compare them. The units for all of them are in kilojoules per mole. So these are the values to form the chemicals um, in a 
in any chemical reaction. So any chemical that is a reactant will have its bonds breaking instead of forming. Um, so if we were just looking at um, like that water, which I've also, we've also got listed down here. So if we were look at for, looking at forming liquid water, it would take this many kilojoules. If we were looking at breaking, chem, breaking liquid water, then it would be a positive value. It would just switch. Now, we don't have to worry about switching signs for anything because it's done for us by our equation. All the reactants are on the right side, and they're being subtracted. So that subtraction actually flips out their sign for us. Um, so this is kind of a crazy reaction. Uh, crazy looking equation, but it's the change in enthalpy, standard enthalpy of a reaction, is equal to the sum of the enthalpies of formation for the products minus the sum of the enthalpies of formation of the reactants. So this basically means we're going to add up the values for the products and subtract the values for the reactants. But there's one thing that's not shown in this equation, which is kind of annoying. We have to multiply each of the values by their moles. So a better way we could write this is the sum of the moles times your enthalpies of formation of your products. Okay, so we're going to have moles of those. So if we have multiple products, we'll multiply each one by their moles and then add up all the products. Same thing for the reactants. So their moles times their delta H value formation for the reactants. So if we have multiple reactants, we do this calculation and then add them up. And we subtract the two totals. Okay. So we'll look at some examples on that. So some things to note, we looked at um, a little bit on the table. So the enthalpies of formation depend on the state of matter. So it's important to be careful choosing your values from the table. So there's our water example again. Enthalpy values for chemicals in their elemental form, as we looked at, are zero. For instance, oxygen gas O2 is zero because it's already in nature in that stable form. So some um, that we might run into often would be like your Hofbrinkle ones, H2O2, F2, Br2, I2, nitrogen, and 2, Cl2. The Hofbrinkle elements, those would all be um, zero for their delta H value. Um, any like solid metals would be zero, things like that. All right, so we're going to take a look at actually setting this up in a couple of examples. So let's take a look at our first one here. So again, you'll want that textbook by uh, handy um, so that you can look up your values for this and check them. So we're going to start with our first one. So we want to start with finding the total of all of our products. So we're going to start on the product side. Um, so we're going to start here and go that way. So we're going to start with our 12 moles of carbon dioxide, CO2. And we want to multiply that by its standard enthalpy of formation of CO2. So in your book, look under carbon and you should be able to find your value for the carbon dioxide, which is negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. Um, then we want to find our next product. So we're going to add to it because we're finding the sum of our products. Six moles, and that's our water of H2O times its value from the table. So again, the water, we have that on our previous page, or you can look in your book. It is a gas, so we want the negative 241.82 kilojoules per mole. So that is our products. So I like to put those all in brackets so we can say, okay, here's my products. I want to make sure I calculate that all together. And then, we want to subtract our reactants. I'm going to put subtract, and we're going to start getting our reactants in here. So our first reactant is the C6H6. We have two moles of it. And we're going to look that one up. Again, we look it up under carbon because that's our first element. So C6H6 as a liquid is 49.0 kilojoules per mole. So it takes energy in to make that one. That's an endothermic one. 
And then we can add our next element. We have 15 moles of oxygen. But our oxygen's value is 0 kilojoules per mole. There's no real sig figs on this part. Since these are going to multiply and be 0, that part you really don't even have to write down. Um, but it, I just want to make sure that you guys see it. So this is the C6H6 and our oxygen. So in terms of calculating this, you can get it all in your calculator at once, but you're going to have to use a lot of parentheses. So I like to break it down into some steps just to make sure I'm getting all my values in there. When you're doing the in-between steps, if you're going to calculate chunks of it, and then find a final answer, do not round anything in the middle. Keep all your figures. So we're going to start with 12 times negative 393.5, negative 4722. And when we multiply these, our moles are going to cancel with each other. So we get kilojoules. So there's our first reactant plus our second one, 6 times negative 241.82, and I get negative 1450.92 kilojoules. So there's all my products. Simplify out the reactants. So we've got 2 times 49, which would give us 98.0 kilojoules and then this is zero so that part is done so now we can do all of our math together so negative four seven two two plus negative one four five zero point nine two minus ninety eight and we get this value delta H would equal negative six two seven zero point nine two kilojoules. Okay, so let's talk about significant figures. Um, all of our moles are not going to play a role in sig figs because those are all exact numbers. Um, so we're like counting out how many moles. So we could write this, for instance, as 12 or 12.0000 infinity zeros. So this actually has an infinite number of significant figures. We don't have to deal with it. Wonderful. We've got one decimal place here one here and two here. Um, since we're dealing with adding and subtracting um, with those decimal places, we want to round to the lowest number of decimal places, which would just be one decimal place. So this would round to negative 6270.9 kilojoules. So we would call that the standard enthalpy change for the reaction. We call it standard because, again, all the values are measured at the same standard temperature, which is um, or same temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius from that table. So that is how Hess's law is done um, with these ones. So each of these reactions or each of these pieces, um, they actually measured and figured out the formation of each chemical. So that's why we're able to use these four calculating has this off. Um, so we're going to try one more. If you want to pause and try this one on your own and then check it, you can. Or if you just need to hear the explanation, um, you can too. This one's a little bit different because we're going to look at um, finding one of the missing pieces. So um, it says the delta H naught, so the change in enthalpy of our reaction for the following reaction is negative 1502.16 kilojoules. Calculate the change in enthalpy of formation for Na2SO4. So we want to know the delta H value for this chemical. So we can look up all the other ones, but we can't look up this chemical. But we have the total. It's like we have this answer and we're trying to find one of the pieces. So let's go ahead and set up our equation and see what it looks like. So our delta H value we have, so that's our negative 1502.16 kilojoules. And that's going to equal, let's start with our products. So we've got two moles of water times 
and its value as a liquid this time. So water as a liquid is negative 285.83 kilojoules per mole. We want to add to it our other product. We do have one mole of that product, but we don't know its value. So I'm just going to put x. So there's our products. We're going to subtract our reactants. So our first reactant, we have one mole, H2SO4. So we're going to look up that value. This one is aqueous. This one's listed under sulfur since it has a hydrogen in front. So it should be negative 909.3 kilojoules per mole. Plus our next reactant is two moles NaOH times its value. It is also aqueous. It's under sodium. So negative 469.6 kilojoules per mole. So that's our last reactant. So we got both of our reactants, both of our products. Now we can try and solve for x here. So let's start by just simplifying anything that we can. So we're going to keep this on the left side. So we've got negative we've got 2 times negative 285.83 negative 571.66 our moles cancel so we're left with kilojoules plus we have one mole times x so I'm just going to put one mole and my variable x there if you want to keep it in parentheses so you know what that x is you can okay minus our product or excuse me our reactants so we have one mole times negative 909.3. So that's negative 909. Oh my goodness. 909.3 kilojoules. Moles cancel. Plus negative, let's see, plus two times negative 469.6. So we get minus 939.2 kilojoules. Okay, so we're getting closer. We've got some simpler numbers here. So let's keep going. Again, we can leave this part. We look at simplifying this. Um, we can go ahead and simplify this into a number. Um, so we've still got our negative 571.66 kilojoules plus one mole x. Minus, so negative 909.3 minus negative, minus 939.2. So we get minus negative 1848.5 kilojoules. Since we're subtracting a negative, we're really just adding it. So we can think of it that way, um, kind of simplifying our value there. Um, now we want to keep simplifying so let's go ahead and move this to the other side so we subtract it since it's being added so minus 1848.5 on both sides that would cancel this one's kind of ugly but we can get there minus 1848.5 all right, we get negative 3350.66 kilojoules equals, we're going to bring down the rest, 571.66 kilojoules, so one more x. All right, so now we can add this to the other side. Seventy-one point six kilojoules. We're getting there. That would cancel. So I'm going to bring this up to the top. So we've got this, and we're going to add five seventy-one point six six to it. So 
we get, I'm going to bring this up here, negative 2779 kilojoules. So that's our left side, and that equals our right side, which is one mole of x. Now, our delta H of formation, each of them are in kilojoules per mole. So all we have to do now is divide those moles over. Cancel on that side, and we have that our x value, or our value for Na2SO4, is this. So if we wanted to report our answer, we could say that uh, delta H not of formation is negative 277-9 kilojoules per mole, and that's for Na2SO4. All right, it's not pretty, but it's there. Wrote a little too big. So um, there's kind of two ways you can use this equation. We can use it to find our delta H of the whole reaction, or we can use it to find um, how much energy it takes to form one of the specific chemicals in the reaction, if we already know the delta H of the whole reaction. Um, but all of this is centered around setting up your equation um, and using those values in the textbook. So if you were to take a look, let me grab one of the homework sheets. Um, if we were to take a look at one of our ones from our homework, um, for instance, your first one, you'd start with your products. You'd have your one mole of NaCl times its value from the book, plus your one mole of water times its value from the book, and then based off our equation here, we'd then subtract our reactant, so one mole of our reactant, times its value from the book, time, plus one mole of the other reactant, times its value from the book. So it's that same type of pattern using this. I know it looks like an ugly equation, but the main idea is your products minus your reactants. Always start on the right side, okay? Make sure that you've done your products first. All right, um, so you're going to be trying out this homework, and um, if you have questions,